My family and friends were instrumental in my healing. I have a terrific family, and particularly with Indian families, you know, we're culturally very close. My parents were with me all throughout my chemotherapy, and my mom would read me stuff from Guru Granth Sahib, our holy book. Some of them uh, are just little sentences that I have that are going to stay with me throughout my life. I am a breast cancer survivor, a blood cancer survivor. I'm Dr. Holly Lucille, a naturopathic doctor. I am a mom of a teenager, a bass account owner, a military wife. My name is Dr. Deanna Atai, and I'm a breast surgeon. I am a cancer survivor who is looking for answers just like you. I'm Debra Tripathi. I'm a medical oncologist. What works, what doesn't. Welcome to Thrive with Namrata. So, Thrive with Namrata, we're back again. And this time, actually, you just saw me on screen talking about my wonderful family and friends who helped me through my first diagnosis. And this was a clip from One a Minute that you watched. But then, of course, I went through my second bout of uh, blood cancer. And my parents literally just moved in with me. And the only thing that worked was I couldn't, I couldn't eat hospital food. So I haven't eaten Indian food in a long time, but the only thing I craved during chemo was actually curry. I know. So that's what I ate. My mom would wake up in the morning at 6, fix curry and bring it to the hospital because I couldn't leave the hospital. And for six months, I lived on curry and chemo. So that was quite a, quite a diet. So the three C's, curry, chemo, and cancer, the curry and chemo worked. And I'm in remission and very, very happy that I am. But today, what I'm going to be talking about with our esteemed panel is the importance of social structure and family support in dealing with cancer. And does that necessarily, as always, increase your chances of survival? I think initially it's, it's been intriguing to me to watch certain cases um, that there's some challenges with family because not only are you as the perhaps individual getting diagnosed with cancer fearful and questioning and um, your, your family members are too and then everybody seems to have an opinion, right? So their fear uh, in, in, it gets in the way too. So I think those relationships, it's an opportunity for, um, for family relationships and social structure to get stronger. It really, really is an opportunity. I, Dean Ornish wrote a great book called Love and Surviving. And it was really about the science behind the healing power of intimacy. And so using this opportunity to get more intimate and more authentic with the people that you share relationships with, I think is really something that people should do. Which kind of goes to what you had said in another episode, uh, Debu, is about marriage uh, and people living longer after cancer if they were married. That's right. People that are married live longer not only from cancer but uh, heart disease and other things. And again, we don't know if it's a cause and effect relationship. It could be that people that are married also have other healthier life habits. We don't know that. But the bottom line is that social connectivity uh, is very important to quality of life. And so whether we might debate whether it's important in quantity of life or living longer is almost moot because it's something you can easily do. It doesn't have a downside. And if it can improve the quality of life, then why not adopt it? Now, when you're talking about drugs that have side effects, well, then you have to make a distinction between quality and quantity of life. But certainly, I advocate to all my patients to make sure they build a social network if they don't have one. If they do have one, take advantage of it, extend it, and use it to support yourself both uh, physically as well as uh, with your uh, emotional state. I think it's also important to that we as physicians don't make an assumption that because a patient may come in with a large supportive, apparently supportive family, that that family or those friends are truly supporting the patient. Um, I think it's important that we really talk to the patient and say, are they really helping you out or are they just interested in their own issues? Family dynamics are not always what they seem. So we sometimes have to little dig a little bit di uh, deeper to make sure that the people that the patient is surrounding themselves by are truly actually helping and supporting them. And sometimes the patient isolates themselves. That's a very common reaction mm -hmm. to being ill is just wow. to put up the walls. Right. And that has to be detected and addressed as well. 
So right, so when you're talking about social networks, I think both online and what I call on the ground are, are important. Yeah, and there's actually a lot of social networks online, whether by Twitter or Facebook, and a lot of the patients that participate in those groups actually feel they are just as supported, if not more so, by their online friends than sometimes they are in real life. So don't feel that if you don't have this whole army of friends and family by your side that you have to be going through this alone. There are people out there that you can connect with and who can be very supportive. There's even clinical trials that have uh, supported this as well. Uh, Mindfulness-based stress reduction done over the internet was studied in Canada where people would have to otherwise drive long distances and has been found to be effective. And I think maybe also local support groups, right? For, for various different types of cancers. And I think also ages, younger mothers having a support group of younger mothers going through cancer versus the type of cancer. Because what breast cancer means to someone who's 80 and a great grandma is probably very different from what breast cancer means to somebody who's 30 with two small kids. So I think she would probably relate better with somebody who's also in their 30s going through colon cancer with two small kids. So I think that would be probably an important uh, thing that we should you know, work toward bringing it into our communities as well. What I'm taking away from that is uh, definitely be beef up your social support. And uh, I don't think that necessarily means Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever else. Although those are important, we're talking about more physical relationships. So, um, you know, all I can say at the end of this episode is without going into too many details is mom and dad, my sisters, my friends, my family, I love you. And thank you for being with me through everything because you're what makes every moment worth thriving. I love you.